Hello and welcome back to the Linux Panic YouTube channel. In this video, I'm going to show you how to install version 7 of Wine on Ubuntu 20.04.3 long term support. But before we do that, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and like this video so you don't miss out on any future videos. Anyway, Wine, what is it? Wine is not an emulator, that's what it stands for. But what Wine does is it transfers Windows processes and calls and commands for how software works converts it into something that can be established and used by Linux. So for example, Steam. If you wanted to install Steam, you can do that either one of two ways. You can install it through the Ubuntu store. In this case, it would work. But in this case, I'm just going to use the EXE as it's Steam is the mo most widely known gaming platform and the most used gaming platform. So first, let's install Wine. Now you'd think it would be as easy as sudo apt install Wine64. And you wouldn't be wrong to think that it would be as easy as that. Because if you Google how to install Wine on Ubuntu, this is generally what comes back to you. But as we'll find out, Wine version 7 isn't actually available to download directly from the repositories. That's because Wine version 7 was only released nine days ago, was only released on the 18th of the 18th of January 2022 so you'd think well, it should be available by now and that's not necessarily not, that's not necessarily true uh, the wine uh, wine HQ have said hey look we're releasing the binary packages soon so it's then downloadable for, but for the time being just got to download it directly from their website I mean of course this would work regardless but as we can see here wine version 5 for Ubuntu that's not what we want. So what we've got to do is first off, wait for this to finish installing, and then we can move on from there. But Wine has its benefits. You can use Windows only software on Linux, Linux variations. I use Linux for Lutris on Manjaro because that's the Linux variation that I run when I'm not using Windows. Uh, Wine can run all sorts of software. It can run any amateur radio software. I've been helping my father with that recently. Uh, you can run anything, but mostly, most Windows software should just work straight out the gate. So once we've installed Wine, we want to check the version. So Wine, version, and it's version 5. I mean, that's all well and good, but if I just decide to check here and decide to go, hey, I want to run... Where's Wine? It's not here. Wine's installed. Try and run it. Just see there's an archive. Like, that's it. So, let's begin by making a problem. Let's begin, let's begin this the proper way, shall we? So first off, let's remove Wine. And it's as simple as sudo apt get purge remove Wine. This is basically telling us to remove Wine. That's it. Once it gets rid of wine, wine is just it's just gonna be easier. Now if we just go wine version, wine doesn't exist. This is good. So the first thing we want to do is enable the 32-bit architecture for Ubuntu. Now to do that, it's sudo d uh, dpkg. We need to add the architecture. Uh, I386. So I386 stands for 32 bit. I don't know why it's not 32, but that's just how it's been. Basically, what it says is that hey, we'll enable 32 bit. Simple as that. Now we need to get the security key for uh, Wine version 7. This is just say, hey, look, I have this. Do you have the responding uh, private key? Because basically, what this is giving, what we're doing now is just downloading the public key. And then when we then go to download, it's just confirming the private key, which Wine HQ will have. So to do that, we need to do w get nc https colon forward slash forward slash dl dot wine hq dot org slash wine hyphen builds slash wine hq dot key. Now, I will stick all of these commands in the description, and I'll also look into making a script as well. So, basically, make this easy for you. 
Once that's done, there's no issues. In case you do have any issues with downloading the key and it coming through, you can just go to, you can just put that link into your browser and it will automatically pull the key down into the downloads folder. And what you'd have to do then is just CD into the downloads folder and add the key. So I'll do that now, actually. So let's uh, copy this link, open up Firefox, put the key in, say, hey, look, I have my key. Save this. Now that's been saved. It's going to CD downloads. Now this would be this next step, which is just adding the key is the same regardless of whether you downloaded the key or not. So how to add the key, how to add the security key would be sudo apps key add winehq.key. And if it says OK, it means the key has been added perfectly fine, which is good. So next thing we want to do is add the repository to the repository list. Now, there are many repository lists available for Wine version 7. There is, it supports anything from Linux Mint 19.x, Ubuntu 18.04, Linux Mint 20.x, Ubuntu 20.04, Ubuntu 20.10, Ubuntu 21.04, and Ubuntu 21.10. We only want 21.0, we only want 20.04, as that's the version we're using. So we can just ignore everything else. So what we want to do to add the repository to the list is sudo apt correction sudo add apt repository apostrophe now this is important if you don't put this here it won't work it just won't work i'll i'll show you what happens if you miss an apostrophe on the end as well so once we've done that we want to do deb so basically specifying this as a debian package https colon slash forward slash dl dot wine hq dot org slash wine hyphen builds slash ubuntu local main now hit enter this is what happens if you if you forget the apostrophe at the end it produces this it's wanting more input that's not what we want so in case you do that and you get that little, hey, look, I need more input arrow. You've probably forgotten an apostrophe somewhere. That's fine. Simple mistake. Just control C out, as you can see I did there. Hit up on your arrow keys and then just add the apostrophe or apostrophes where you need to add them. It's easy, easy fix. No need to worry about it. Once we've added the repository to the repository list, we now need to update the packages list. So simple as sudo apt update. Easy as that. Now, as we can see, two packages can be upgraded. That's because we've added them on. And now we want to add the version of Wine we want to use. Now, what I'm going to be doing is adding the stable branch. So this is it doesn't get updated as often as the staging branch or as the development branch is. It just it's stable. It works. It's confirmed good. So to do this, it would be sudo apt install install recommends Ari. recommends wine hq stable and basically what this is going to do is it's going to download the stable version of wine 7.0 as we can see in a couple of places we have wine 7.0 7.0 focal one now we confirmed this is working this is the correct version we want and everything will come down fine now, this is not currently available on the main repository list, as we saw earlier on, because YNHQ have not yet released the binaries. Well, they're in, they're in the process of making the binaries to go out on the various repositories. But this is just a faster way of getting around it, and this confirms we get the latest version of Wine. Now, what YNHQ have said for the new version of Wine it is... The new version of well, version 7 of Wine is just release represents a year of development and 9100 individual changes, which is a rather lot. But the main the main and major changes are making most modules are converted to PE format, better theming support with bundled theme for a more modern look, vastly improved human interface device 
stack and joystick support. So there's always a little bit of fun there for you people that use like using flight sticks for various games. And new WoW 64 architecture. Those are the major changes that WineHQ are touting for version 7. Now once we've done this, we should just be able to go, hey look, we now have wine. Double click. When you launch a EXE for the first time after installing wine for the first time, it's going to go through the setting up the configuration and all of this. And it's going to say, hey, look, I don't have mono. That's fine. Just tell it to install. It will do that for the first time you launch any EXE with wine for the first time. It just does. It doesn't pull everything down. So they're just confirming, hey, look, this gets the thing. Once that's done, it's going to install it and away we're off to the races. It's going to finish off updating what it needs to do. And here we are. We have Steam. We have Windows Steam. Now, this will, you, of course, there is Windows, there is, correction, Ubuntu Steam. But we're just using uh, Windows Steam for this example because it's the most widely accepted. And give it a couple of seconds and we'll be off to the races. Now, you could use Wine for, you could use Wine for anything Windows based. It's not guaranteed to work 100, nothing is guaranteed to work 100% of the time, but a good chunk of Windows software will work on uh, will work with Wine, and that's always good. Wine barely weighs down on the system; it pulls nothing. Now, to give this a little check, we'll just do near fetch. Here we are, Windows Steam. I mean, yeah, Windows Steam up, up and running, working. Just to uh, see what the resource the system is pulling down. One gigabyte, or one point six gigabytes worth of RAM. That's the main. That's uh, one of the main benefits of using. Uh, Linux over Windows. If I were to be looking at Windows while it, whilst it's sat idle with one thing open, it'd be pulling three or four gigs worth of RAM. This, 1.6. Barely anything. It works wonderfully. Anyway, this is the end of the video. I'd like to thank you very much for watching. I'd like to th thank my uh, patrons over at Patreon, uh, Raining Hazmat and Ashley, for being subscribed over there. I'd like to thank you for w very much for watching the video. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button, leave a comment if you have any, have any issues, and I hope you have a good rest of your day. Goodbye.